Peter's denial of Christ is one of the most well-known failures of all time. From his bold declaration that he would never deny Christ, to his bitter denunciation, I don't know the man. The good news is that Peter was forgiven and restored by Jesus. And once Peter had been restored, he went and preached a sermon to the very people who had crucified Jesus, and 3,000 people were saved. Peter failed the Lord miserably, but he failed forward. Peter failed, but he did not allow his failure to destroy his future or define his life. How did he do that? We can learn a lesson from Peter that will help us in our own times of failure. Failure is a reality of life. If you are alive and living for the Lord, you will fail along the way. And failure hurts, we don't like it. But the truth is that failure does not need to be final. In this video, we will look at the story of Peter and talk about some important things we can learn from him. If you enjoy my content, please drop a comment below, like, share, and kindly hit the subscribe button if you're new here. Thanks. So, why did Peter deny Jesus after everything? It's commonly held that Peter denied Jesus out of abject fear. Like the other disciples, he had heard Jesus' explanation of his coming death and yet reacted as one using trauma coping mechanisms. No Jew was ignorant of Rome's calculated violence toward detractors, and extreme shock could have caused Peter, and any of his peers, to respond self-protectively. Much is also made of Judas' betrayal of Jesus. Though the other disciples fled the scene, it is Peter and Judas whose actions are highlighted. Here the Gospel writers offer helpful contrast. Judas intentionally, willfully, and premeditatedly gave Jesus up to be arrested, Matthew 26 verses 14 to 16. As for the other ten disciples, it is unclear whether they were questioned or otherwise held to account by strangers the way Peter was. From how the Gospels describe it, they fled and hid together, which meant they had at least comfort in numbers. One could argue that while Peter denied Jesus, he also placed himself in a position physically close to Jesus' trial to be near him in some way. Though it may be a matter of semantics, Peter didn't deny Jesus. He denied knowing Jesus to three strangers. His later repentance would show that he never wanted to abandon Jesus. Perhaps Peter was angry that this was the plan. He didn't want Jesus to suffer but to ride out in glory. Similar hypotheses have been made about Judas. Neither man seemed to be on the same page as Jesus and didn't want to face the reality of Jesus not doing what they hoped he would do. What can we learn from Peter denying Jesus? Jesus knows far more than we do about how we will think, speak, and act. Despite Peter's protestations, Jesus reveals that Peter will deny him. Before this exchange, Jesus washes Peter's feet and the other disciples' feet, demonstrating servant leadership. After the exchange, Peter is still included in the final moments before Jesus' arrest. In other words, Jesus anticipates Peter's actions, yet he does not cast him out of the group. Rather, Peter receives the same instruction and encouragement as his peers. Jesus always stands ready to forgive and restore. After the resurrection, Jesus appears multiple times to the disciples and others. On one occasion, Jesus asks Peter three times if he loves him, some would say one for each time he denied knowing Jesus. When Peter affirms he loves Jesus, Jesus gives him the charge to care for the believers after Jesus ascends to his Father. Peter's response indicates that he knew Jesus understood his denial was impulsive, a reflection of his poor understanding of Christ's upcoming resurrection. Jesus knew that Peter would deny him, and he loved him anyway. Similarly, he understands that the pressures of this life wear on us and can cause us to waver in our resolve. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. 1 John 1 verse 9, Jesus allowed his faithlessness for a time for the greater faith that would come after the resurrection. As 2 Timothy 2 verse 13 says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Through Jesus, redemption is available. In the opening pages of the book of Acts, following Jesus' ascension, who rallies the other disciples, who speaks for the group, to a gathering of soon-to-be converts, about repentance and faith. Peter, the disciple became a rock of the early church, as Jesus foretold embarking on missionary journeys, pinning two epistles, and more. A moment, or two, of weakness could not negate what Jesus wanted to accomplish through the life of Peter.